Hello, Working Preachers. This is Joy J. Moore. Our spring campaign is in full swing, but we need your help to reach our goal. In case you didn't see our email this past Wednesday, I wanted to let you know that any gift made to the spring campaign before May 31st will be matched dollar for dollar up to $10,000. Go to workingpreacher.org, go today, to find out what additional surprises await you with your support for the Working Preacher Spring Campaign. Welcome to Sermon Brain Wave with me, Joy J. Moore. And me, Caroline Lewis. And me, Matt Skinner. Today, our readings are from the day of Pentecost, which falls on May 28th, 2023. And our texts are from Acts chapter 2, the Pentecost text, verses 1 through 21. Our psalm is the 104th Psalm, verses 24 through 34 and 35b. Our epistle is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3b through 13. And our gospel is chap John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. But today is a special recording because this is the 15th anniversary of the 15th year of the recording of Sermon Brainwave. And for those 15 years of recording, you have heard Caroline Lewis's voice. And as we celebrate this, I think we need to celebrate perfect attendance. <laughs> Gold star. Gold star. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't even believe it. Thank you for that, Joy. And we were talking earlier about the the early, early days, the very beginning, the very first podcast where we were in a, it was in the classroom in Northwestern Hall, and we had this snowball, the snowball mic, and we had to be, you know, we, we had to like lean in <laughs> And talk, to, oh, yeah. talk to the snowball, talk to the snowball. And uh, so it's quite remarkable, grateful for these many years of accompanying preachers and thinking about the texts with uh, you all and, and grateful for the conversations that uh, we have had over the recent years. And Matt, you and I for also a very long time. So it's an honor and, and, but it's also really unbelievable too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we're saying things new, you I and know. I. Uh, I took a, I took a nine-month break there in a sabbatical early on. But yeah, I'm not going to go back and listen to the snowball days. And so. people have come and gone, and Joy is here to keep things fresh, new, call us to account. Uh, no, the, the podcast has changed in terms of its membership um, over the years in, in many ways and different voices come and gone, but the, the constant has always been, we've got these lectionary texts and we care about preaching and we think that biblical preaching changes lives. So mm -hmm. it's still, um, it's still fun mm -hmm. to yes. be honest. Uh, it's, it's, it's a joy. It is. Yeah. Indeed. I wonder, let's get ourselves some mail here, but I wonder uh, how many of our listeners have been faithful for, you know, 15 years or how many <laughs> are, have been faithful for every week? I'm just, I just Maybe wonder. The accolade. Yeah. Yeah, well, reach out. Let us know. Yeah. Send us an email and say, yeah, Caroline, I haven't missed your voice one week for the yeah, yeah, and we should maybe we'll maybe if that's the case we'll have to get little pins that we absolutely just, we talked about this a couple of months ago where I as you know got perfect attendance in Sunday school and we all got we got a little pin that we could we that was perfect attendance so not just a gold star we might send you a pin I'll have to look into that anyway into that. make sure Ben is listening when we. <laughs> Ben, order the pins. Order the pins yes. right now. 
All right. Well, we do have Pentecost. So happy Pentecost to all of our listeners and to the three of you. And we let's start with uh, John. John is always the gospel reading for Pentecost Sunday in year A. It's this section from John 20, 19 through 23, where Jesus makes his uh, second resurrection appearance, uh, his first to Mary Magdalene in the garden. Here's his second one to the disciples uh, in the locked space. And then year B is a section from chapter 15 and chapter 16, back to the farewell discourse, the uh, two other occurrences of the advocate or the spirit in the farewell discourse. And then year C goes back to chapter 14, uh, which is uh, which is also talks about the spirit. So with John 20, however, I'd like to suggest three things that Pentecost means that that I see in this passage, that Pentecost means the coming of the spirit, the giving of the spirit is the promise of peace. Mm -hmm. And that would be the first thing that we, you know, we, we've, we've talked about this over the years that what we have in all of these texts is such a unique, unique pneumatologies. And so an encouragement to our listeners to, to preach that pneumatology. What, <laughs> what does the coming of the spirit mean? And, and so I'm just speaking about John here. And for John, it is the promise of peace that Jesus promised his disciples back in chapter 14, verse 27. And so it is that that promise of peace. It's a fulfillment of that mm -hmm. peace among you and peace be with you. And so the spirit is the presence and the promise of peace. Mm -hmm. Second thing is that the spirit is a cause, the presence of the spirit and the giving of the spirit is a cause for joy. Mm -hmm. And so we get in, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord and Jesus actually promised this joy back in chapter 16. So I would encourage our listeners to go back. It's not in the lectionary, so you don't, you wouldn't necessarily make this connection, but going back to chapter 16, 20 to 22, where Jesus says, you will have joy, joy will come again. And, and here it is that, that the spirit as the paraclete is the one who will remind you of this joy, who will bring you this joy uh, at once again. And then last point that the spirit means being sent. Uh, the spirit means being sent. So back in chapter seven, seven ch back in chapter 17 and the high priestly prayer, Jesus has talked, Jesus talked about this and uh, we didn't have that this year, but in seven, seven, 18, as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Mm -hmm. And then here as the father has sent me, so also I send you. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that sending in the gospel of John does not happen until that spirit is present. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, that sending of that sending out into the world is what is going to be the fulfillment of John three sixteen. Mm -hmm. So peace, joy, and sending. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I got. That's, That's your I'm Pentecost going. sermon, your Johannine Pentecost sermon. I love it. I love it. I'm going to do a nerdy thing before Matt drops some wisdom on us. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, uh, I don't know why it stood out for me, or maybe I've just been paying attention to this again, but um, um, verse 19 begins, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week. And uh, it stood out for me, and sometimes we forget how it is that um, the followers of Jesus, um, the ancient Jews, marked time. And they marked the beginning of the day in the evening of the day. So um, I, I, I don't know what 
anyone might want to do with that. I don't know if uh, that might be good news for somebody that has an evening service and to tell the folks in the evening service that actually we're the ones starting the week. I don't I don't know. But that stu- stood out for me uh, just in terms of what it means for the marking of the day begin, be, beginning at the evening. Um, for me, in my own rituals, that's that's when I think about what's going to happen the coming day. It's where I take time to pray in Thanksgiving for the day that has ended, uh, the events of the day that has ended, and anticipation uh, for God's presence, um, to use the word for uh, Pentecost, for sending me out in the day to come. Mm-hmm. And, and so beginning the day, not with the sun rising, but the sun setting. I, I don't know, but um, we're, 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 I just throw that out there. It, it struck me this time. Mm-hmm. Matt, give us something we can work with. <laughs> I, don't know. I haven't done this 15 years. I'm out. No. Um, and back to the gold star thing, uh, Ben, who yes. runs everything behind the, mm-hmm. behind the scenes here, says that uh, if you are indeed a gold star listener, you can send an email to CBP, that's for Center of Biblical Preaching, CBP at Luther Sem, that's Luther like the reformer, S-E-M, dot E-D-U. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you should get some kind of hazard pay or something. Anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. Pentecost. Right. Let's do it. Yeah, it's um, it's Jesus who gives the spirit in, in John's gospel. I think it's Jesus who gives the spirit in Acts as well. We'll get to that. There's um, a creed about that. There is a creed about that. There's also a notable like global schism in the church about that. But just for for today, um, the you know we're all I'm Presbyterian. Joy, you're Methodist. Caroline, you're Lutheran. We're three denominations that aren't known for having a lot to say about the Holy Spirit. Sometimes in some churches, it's different. But you know, it, it's there other other denominations. Mm-hmm have we kind of more <laughs> what's that we do that that's a big methodist thing <laughs> yeah i mean definitely more so than than my frozen chosen presbyterian siblings well, um, we like to call the spirit the shy member of the trinity <laughs> yeah and my some of us don't know what to do with the spirit and yeah. the the spirit is the spirit of jesus <laughs> the spirit is is the spirit that Jesus uh, gives out. I just, I, it's, it's boggling, mind boggling that people can talk about being deeply in love with Jesus and be really drawn to the Jesus they meet in the pages of the gospels and then find the Holy spirit weird because there's, I'm not, you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to get myself in Trinitarian hot water here before Trinitarian Sunday, but there's a, there's a, there's a consistency, right? There's a coherence between Christ and and the spirit. One of the things I love about spending so much time reading the book of Acts is the spirit of Jesus also continues to surprise people and continues to include people that people thought weren't going to be included. And so the fact that that this is a commissioning scene here in John 20, Mm -hmm. where Jesus himself, the one who has talked about friendship and companion, uh, like Caroline's been talking about, you know, is the one who gives us, gives us the spirit as a means of continuing that ministry, but continuing that relationship, mm-hmm. it's just, um, it's just, it's worth noting. I think I'm saying everything obvious. You, you, there's no wisdom here, new, no new wisdom here. But to help, I don't want to say demystify the Holy Spirit because nobody can do that. But to say, this is the next phase. This is the next step. This is the next chapter in the story of Jesus Christ and the story of God's uh, love for the world, for God to be present now among us in this new way, mm-hmm. which in John, you know, requ- is, is work, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the father mm-hmm. has sent me. So I send you, right? There's a task mm-hmm. uh, implied in that. And then the seriousness about this, about the sins of people. Yeah. Uh, that you have the power in your life, in the witness you bear in word and in deed, to be a part of helping people discover what it means to be set free from sins, um, or to be part of what continues to bury people under the weight of sin in the world. Um, 
it, it's quite a responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that interests me about the book of Acts, again, I know I'm jumping between two texts here, the power that Acts gives to the church as an expression of Jesus in his ministry, mm -hmm. most days scares the daylights out of me because it seems like a really bad decision for God to give that kind of responsibility to it. And an organization that is responsible for letting so many people down at various times in history, also for showing up at various times in history. Mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, that's the way it works, that God gives this awesome responsibility to us to carry on not our own ministry, not a subservient secondary ministry, but really the same ministry that Jesus himself inaugurated and continues to empower through the Spirit. God had, an a, plan. Here. God really had an a plan to form a people with whom God's spirit so evidently abides that the world notices and God does not and never has had a B plan. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I would say, yeah. And I would say too, that uh, I want to just read a little clip about that verse because it, really underscores what we're talking about in terms of being sentenced to the world for the sake of God's presence in the world. Mm -hmm. Just to remind our listeners that sin in the gospel of John is a very different category. It has a very different mm -hmm. meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, uh, and this is reading from my doctor mother. So Gail O'Day. Gail O'Day. Since sin since sin, not recognizing and embracing the revelation of God in Jesus, is a theological category in John, forgiveness of sins is not about the act of penance in relation to individual deeds. Rather, forgiveness of sins is the community's spirit-empowered mission to continue Jesus' work of making God known in the world, and through that work to bring the world to judgment and decision through its response to Jesus. And mm -hmm. so that that is really, a, when you think about what that means, you know, that particular verse, it's gotten carried over into a number, case in point, my denomination, in part of, of, what, of what that means. But it it's a responsibility of, of uh, of how is it that you are uh, how is it that you are being that presence of Jesus and the Spirit in the world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and where is it that you are preventing that? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's really that what's at stake in this verse. Where are you preventing that? Where are you where are you uh, blocking the opportunity? for people, people to be in the presence of Jesus and to be in relationship with God. That's really what's at stake in this verse. That's, it. That's what's at stake. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. We should talk about Acts. Oh, great idea. Yeah. If I think about where you just ended, Caroline, in calling us to recognize our capacity, and, and, and Matt, you made this reference too of, of, of God putting this, responsibility on the church, an institution that has failed over and over and over again. Um, when, I, when I think about that, what does it mean for us to recognize that what is happening in Acts is everyone coming together and mm -hmm. hearing and recognizing that God has shown up and these are the things that God is doing and they hear it so that they can understand it from their particular context. Um, that, that's a translation of what it means to say, I, I heard it in my language. But it, it, it also means that, you know, for some in Jesus' world, salvation was being fed. For some in Jesus' world, salvation was being given water. For some, salvation was being healed from a disease or raised from the dead. And each of these is a circumstance where people hear in their own context, recognize in their own language, see how I switch those words there, where God has shown up. And that's what's happening here. The people had gathered. This is a this is a holiday. This is not this is not new news, but this is a holiday that 
is not 2,000 years old. The, the, the gathering of people for Pentecost was an ancient practice of, of the Jews, uh, a festival, uh, and they were there for that and something incredible happened they weren't expecting. God's spirit descended in the way that God's spirit had descended on the first temple and never descended on the second temple. Okay, I just said somebody's got to go read an Old Testament episode to understand what I'm talking about. I'm not digressing. I'm putting it in context. God's spirit descends and the whole idea of this gathering is changed for eternity. Yeah, and it's a and it's a Jewish gathering. It's all Jews and proselytes who are here. The idea of a of a Gentile church is not yet in view, but it's this. It, it's really interesting how for Acts it has to begin in Jerusalem, and begin with people who represent a real wide array of of geography. And that that list of of places where they come from raises all sorts of questions because of. Some places it includes, but some places it leaves out. But it's basically, you know, we're talking a global Judaism that's very different, very diverse, that finds, or I should say maybe rediscovers a kind of commonality and is called together. Um, Willie James Jennings talks about being called out of diaspora. Not that there's anything inherently wrong with diaspora, but there's a new kind of belonging that these diaspora peoples rediscover here in the spirit that's that's powerful, that Pentecost comes as an act of power. Yes, people are doing things they don't ordinarily have the power to do, but it's mostly the creation of a new community, a new belonging, a, 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 a community of the saved. What I would want to emphasize as well on, on this Pentecost and as well as any other, I, don't know, I can't think of how many times I've taught or written on this passage, that, um, that we don't treat it as nostalgia, Right. We don't treat it as an event that happened back then that started something and we're still riding a wave. Um, uh, Earl Richard, uh, there's a, an act scholar who people probably not heard of, has a, an article titled, uh, not a very sexy title, but a very accurate descriptive one, Pentecost as a recurring theme in acts. Hmm. <laughs> recurrent. Um, but what he means by that is there are multiple Pentecosts. If we understand Pentecost to be times where God breaks in through the spirit and sets the church on either a new course of travel hmm. or a new discovery about what God is making possible hmm. because of the life, death, resurrection, ascension of, of Jesus Christ. And that that's this patterning in acts that Every now and then the spirit will show up and create a bit of either chaos or wonder mm -hmm. or confusion or new opportunity. And that's, I think, a better way of looking at Pentecost. I don't like it when people call it the birthday of the church, because that feels like nostalgia. That feels like mm -hmm. looking into the mm -hmm. past mm -hmm. to me. It's the first of many Pentecost moments that we continue to live into, which I think is a helpful kind of yeah. way of shifting mm -hmm. people's perception. I like, that. Of the, I, I of the like event. that too. And I think the other thing the, what what really uh, was a verse that uh, connected with me this year, and it really relates to what you were talking about, Matt, is, I mean, I know it's Joel, but, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, yeah, quoting Joel. Uh, verse 17, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Mm -hmm. And so it's this, it's, Again, it, it that will it's an it's future. It's a future mm -hmm. tense verb, and so it can't be nostalgia because it's constantly, you know, it's at the present, but it's constantly looking forward. Mm -hmm. And that verb there can be translated. Uh, it's pour out here, but it became can be translated bestow liberally. It can be translated spill, mm -hmm. translated gush out. Mm -hmm. And so there's something just like, uh, I, I love that, you know, it's not just pour, you do, and it gives you this image of not just, you know, pouring a little cup, but like this, mm -hmm. it's just gonna, it's just gonna gush over and then on all flesh. Mm -hmm. And so this all encompassing future oriented, future perspective, future direction of the spirit that is just you know, pouring out uh, upon all flesh is just, it, it just makes you realize that, that 
that nostalgia really doesn't work. And the, and as you, as you were talking about, Matt, that, that presence and promise of the spirit cannot be encapsulated and it can't be, uh, it, it, it can't be something that can be controlled or, or located on a day. It just, it's, and that's, and now we move into the season of Pentecost. And so how is it that we carry that, that kind of theological promise forward? And to use that season in Matt's idea, now we move into the season of Pentecost, not just the church year portion of Pentecost, but the eternal post uh, pouring of the Spirit mm -hmm. season of the recurrent pouring of the Spirit. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's a way to look at it. Uh, a, a few weeks ago, I asked my students a question and the answer one of my students gave me really, really struck me. I asked, I asked what happens when the church doesn't show up? And um, they described a weekly reunion where people come into a neighborhood they don't live in to go to a building, to use your word, Matt, that has nostalgia, that's nostalgic for them. And then they leave after they've had this little reunion. And um, what is described here and should be the season we're continually in, where God keeps intruding into wherever God's people are gathered, should be so, I wish I remembered, I should have written down the words you used, uh, Caroline, awe-inspiring. It should be so, um, or maybe it was you, Matt, uh, awe-inspiring. So, so a uh, unique, um, um, that, that, that people pay attention to it, that mm -hmm. people remember it, that people talk about it mm -hmm. and talk about it in a way that compels other people to say, and I'm going to use a, 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 another, um, a, another Johannine text, I wish I was there, a translation for me of, 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 um, of Thomas. I wish I was there when you gathered, because I would have liked to have experienced what you experienced. Mm -hmm. Wow, if people say that yeah. about yeah. what we describe, we've done something in the name of Jesus. Oh. Should we say a little bit about the psalm in 1 Corinthians? Again, you know, very unique. Uh, unique. I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Sorry, I, I forgot, and thank you for that. The psalm, I think, actually does that. Mm -hmm. It's the sense of where God's face is continually shining. And when God's face shines, people have this, this presence of, of, of God. And when God hides God's face, people are dismayed. And so this very first, uh, the, ver the 21st, 24th verse, which opens the reading of the 104th Psalm here says, O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Wow. If that isn't what Pentecost represents, all of God's human creatures gathered together in one place, starting with the Jews, starting in Jerusalem, but that promise from Genesis 12, always for the sake of all the nations who are in diaspora, who have been spread across all of the earth. Yeah. And Great stuff about, and again, you've, the, the way all four passages give a different view of God's spirit, right? So in the yeah. Psalm, strong emphasis on the creative notion, notion of, of the divine spirit, which takes us back, of course, to Genesis chapter two, reminds us of the, uh, the Ezekiel passage in the Valley of, of Dry Bones. First Corinthians 12, the, the idea of unity that we all share the same spirit despite different gifts is something you, you can't preach too much. Mm -hmm. um, this idea that uh, unity is not uniformity Mm -hmm. and that by maintaining certain distinctions, that's what kind of gives value to our unity. There's a lot of that, I think, in, in Acts chapter 2. Yes. But just to note that, there's this way in which I think that what Paul's getting at in 1 Corinthians 12 
he's saying more than just, hey, each of you has value. Mm -hmm. Like you're good at this and you're good at that. See what a great team we are. I don't think he's doing That's that right. as much as he's saying something way more organic and mm -hmm. how our identities are all wrapped up in each other's because we all coexist in Christ. Um, so don't water that down, right? Don't turn this into a, a kind of halftime pep talk from the coach saying we just need to work together better or something like that. This is, this is telling us who we are. Mm -hmm.